So the poster boy for the alt-right, as many people have been calling it, Milo Yiannopoulos, has been under some ridicule lately. NPR reports here, First Monday afternoon, the American Conservative Union rescinded its invitation to the alt-right alt -right wing provocateur, noted for his first political post on the internet to speak at its annual conservative political action conference this upcoming weekend. Then a few hours later, Simon & Schuster, the company that had um, offered Milo Yiannopoulos a multi-million dollar book deal, they withdrew. Um, now, I doubt that Milo will have a hard time finding another publisher to um, sell his book, and I'm sure it will make millions of dollars. Um, so, um, anyways, he's at a press conference today where he resigned from Breitbart News. Now, Breitbart News is the home of the alt-right um, Steve Bannon, who is in with Donald Trump, and many believe that he's actually the one influencing a lot of Trump's policies. Um, he's the senior, um, or he was the owner of the Breitbart News Media until he joined the Trump administration. So Milo was, he's always been a very eccentric guy. Um, he calls himself the dangerous faggot. Um, that's apparently something he feels like is a slam on the PC culture that we're all experiencing and hearing nonstop about. And I think, and anybody who's familiar with any of Milo's work will know that this guy says the most ridiculous things to get a reaction, and I don't believe that he believes half of what he says. But still, as in my opinion, this guy has some good and bad things about him. Now Milo, he, he is a free speech advocate, and there's no denying that. After the um, after his appearance at UC Berkeley was canceled recently because there were protests and the police actually, for the safety of Milo Yiannopoulos, had to cancel this event, um, there was a big backlash over it. And I agree with the backlash. I believe that even if you don't agree with somebody, and obviously Milo, he doesn't even know or doesn't convey the things he really thinks. He does things to get a reaction out of people. And this is just going to keep fueling his career. Um, so he resigned from Bre Breitbart, like I said. And in the reason why he um, resigned was because about a year ago, he was on a podcast called The Drunken Peasants. Um, the The... I guess you could call the leader, would be this guy TJ Kirk. He is a YouTuber known as the Amazing Atheist. Um, now, in the podcast, there were some things that were said by Milo that were controversial, to say the least. So, apparently, what had happened was he went on this podcast and was talking about the first times he had sexual relations. Now, um, he was 13 years old when he first had sexual contact or lost his virginity, as he says, with an older gay male. And then at the age of 17, um, described his relationship with a 29-year-old male. And his argument was that at the age of 13, he knew what he was doing and he knew that he was a consensual partner in that relationship. Now, obviously the backlash about this is, if you're age 13 or anywhere under the legal age of consent, that is considered child rape or it's considered child molestation. So... He has been dropped from CPAC, the conservative conference. He's been dropped. He actually resigned from Breitbart before he was fired. His um, reasoning he gave was that um, his reasoning was that he did not want to harm the 
careers of those he had worked with and grew relationships with at Breitbart and in the best interest of Breitbart News would be his resignation effective immediately. And then in the next breath went on to explain how he's going to be starting his own media company and he's not going anywhere. So what are my feelings about this? They're mixed, like I said. Like I hate, I hate, hate, hate all the things he says just because they push a narrative that doesn't need to exist. Um, now I'm all for free speech and I think that what he says even though inflammatory can be important because you're not going to know if you disagree with an opinion until you hear it out. And I think that's where I would agree with him 100%. Because in my opinion, I'm a free speech absolutist. I do not believe that unless you are you know, screaming fire in a crowded theater or directly threatening somebody's heart or well-being, you know, terroristic threats, any of these things, I believe that are wrong, but his opinions aren't, they're not dangerous to the wider population. The only way they could be construed as dangerous is if somebody hears what he says, takes it out of context, and then tries to apply it. Now, like I said, it's a very, very sketchy thing because obviously if you're 13 years old, you have no business having sex with anybody, period. Now, you know, I lost my virginity at age 14, so I know I don't have a lot of room to talk here, but it was to another 14-year-old. It was not to somebody 10 years older than me. So, it's just, it's unfortunate that this is what it took to get him to be dropped by all these people because he's not conveying any message. He's not conveying a policy platform that he wants to see implemented. He's not, he has no vision for what he wants America to be like. He only has these little cute, smarmy, sassy remarks he likes to make to piss off liberals. And it's working. It's working better than he could have hoped and I think that going forward he's gonna only have more success he's only gonna get more followers because of this